Hey everybody, it's Mr. Matthew here, and we're going to be tackling the first portion of protein synthesis, specifically getting, to, getting into transcription and RNA processing. So let's get to it. So let's talk about the mechanisms and the genetic information flow from DNA to RNA. And before we get to it, I want you guys to think back at something that you probably already know. And so what I want you to do is I want you to pause and think, what are mRNA? tRNA and rRNA, and how and where are each involved with protein synthesis? Pause and think. All right. So again, we're getting into the background of protein synthesis. So you should have thought first that uh, mRNA is messenger RNA, and that is going to be the strand of RNA that is going to be made as a DNA transcript during transcription and is going to move from the nucleus out to the ribosome will bring the, in, the code that will ultimately lead to making our protein. tRNA are transfer RNAs, and they are going to bring amino acids to the ribosome that will then correspond to which amino acid is going to put in what sequence based off of that message RNA. On the opposite side of a tRNA from the amino acid is what is known as an anticodon, and the messenger RNA is going to have codons, and they're going to match up, and that will determine which amino acid goes in which place through the sequence of making the protein. And then rRNA stands for ribosomal RNA, and these are going to combine along with the proteins that are actually going to build the structure of the ribosome where translation will take place. So hopefully that was a quick review for you in terms of these key structures. We're really going to be focusing in on the transcription part and the RNA processing, so we're really going to be heavily focusing on mRNA during this video. So what's important to know? The sequence of RNA bases together with the structure of RNA molecule determines the RNA function. So what we know is that mRNA molecules carry information from DNA to the ribosome. The DNA is going to be opened up, and then one of those two strands of DNA is going to serve as a template that is going to end up serving where we are going to make an mRNA transcript that is complementary, again, to one of the two strands of DNA that have opened up. So we know that distinct tRNA molecules bind to specific amino acids that have an anticodon on sequence that base pairs with the mRNA, and the tRNA is recruited to the ribosome during translation to generate the primary structure of the sequence based off of the messenger RNA. So we know that what's on that mRNA will later be complementary to a tRNA when we get to translation. So again, the structure is going to both is going to be dictated by what was on the DNA, and later we'll bring in the right amino acid that will be complementary to that message by what tRNA is going to be brought in. So we know that the sequence of the RNA bases is going to also help build the function of the ribosome. So we know that ribosomes are built of both small and large subunits. Each of those subunits is actually going to be composed of both some RNA, ribosomal RNA, and some proteins, and that every different type of um, organism is going to have a couple of different subunits that are going to come together, and each of those subunits is a combination of RNA molecules and proteins that ultimately provide that structure for the ribosome. So, Again, genetic information flows in a sequence of nucleotides in DNA to a sequence of mRNA bases to ultimately that sequence of amino acids and proteins. And in transcription, transcription is going to happen in the nucleus, if we're talking about in a eukaryote, where the DNA molecule is going to serve as the template, and we are going to make the mRNA molecule during that process of transcription. Later on, during translation, we will see the formation of the protein at the ribosome. So what happens in, in this process of transcription? Well, we know that, again, we have two strands. We have a sense strand, which is going to serve as the non-template strand, and we have the anti-sense strand, which is going to be complementary to our template. And our anti-sense strand is going to then have an RNA polymerase bind to it and proceed along that in a direction where we're going to add complementary RNA molecules to build our mRNA. Now, we already know that DNA or RNA can only be built in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, so we know that this G on the RNA transcript must be the 5' prime end, and it's going to be building towards that U, which is the 3' prime end, and every new base is going to be brought in on that 3' prime end moving in this direction. Just like with DNA, the 
anti-sense strand will be running anti-parallel. So we would know that the C on this anti-sense strand that's up on the top complementary to our G at the beginning of our RNA transcript would therefore have to be the three prime end of that molecule. So we know that this process is going to be going in a particular direction, again, based off of that sequence of the anti-sense strand. We also know that DNA strands act as a template, can also be referred to as uh, the non-coding, the minus strand, or the antisense strand. Any of these terms is, is appropriate, and the selection of which DNA strand serves as a template strand actually will depend on what gene is being transcribed. And so we're going to have signals that me send a message to that RNA polymerase about where to bind and which of the two strands will serve as that non-coding strand, the minus strand, or antisense strand, all of which are interchangeable terms. Now, we can see that the enzyme RNA polymerase is going to synthesize, again, mRNA molecules from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, as we've mentioned before, because we can only target these hydroxyl groups that are here, and we can see that, therefore, the synthesis of these are only going to be able to proceed in a particular direction. So this is based off of what we already understand from the synthesis of RNA using that DNA template, both using complementary bases to form those hydrogen bonds, and also the covalent bond that's bounded by the new nucleotide that's being added to the existing strand has to build in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So what happens in a eukaryote after you make that primary RNA transcript? Well, we know that there's going to be something called RNA processing. And so in the eukaryotic cells, that RNA transcript is going to go through a series of enzymatic regulation modifications before it leaves the nucleus and heads out and finds the ribosome in order to undergo translation. So first of all, we're going to be adding a poly A tail. We are also going to be adding a GTP cap. So we have this, what's called the five prime or GTP cap over here, and we have the poly A tail down here. These are going to help uh, protect the ends of this RNA. We're also going to remove any introns or intravening sequences so that only the sequences of RNA that are to be expressed or exons will ultimately be uh, produced. And the excision of those introns and splicing and the retention of the exons, they have the capacity to generate different versions of mRNA molecules. So there are instances where sometimes the signal will say, in the, as in this case, Exons 1, 2, and 3 will come together in order to make the RNA transcript. And in other instances, what will happen is maybe only exon 1 and 2 would come together. That would ultimately lead to a signal to make a different size protein. And when that happens, when you have a region where you're having different types of exons that come together in this, that is referred to as alternative splicing. And that is another way of getting multiple proteins out of what would be the same base mRNA code or same base mRNA sequence that was made from the DNA template. All right, so that's a pretty quick summary of what the different parts are that go into transcription and then how the product of transcription can ultimately be modified through RNA modification. All right, I hope that was helpful and I'll talk to everybody soon.